everyone. Before I begin today, I want to take a moment. Let's travel back. Maybe close your eyes and think about the days of our childhood. Do you remember those days when our hearts were filled with excitement, ambition, eagerness to grow up and dreams? Now, I also want you to remember the question that people would ask you. What do you want to be when you grow up? Now, do you remember your answers? Do you remember the excitement in your voice when you gave those replies? I'll ask, are there any volunteers to share what you wanted to become? Do you remember what you wanted to become? Yeah? Did you end up becoming one? That's amazing. Well, for most of us, our answers were set. Some of us wanted to traverse the space as an astronaut, while some wanted to be doctors. There were also others who wanted to fly in the sky as pilots, while some wanted to be teachers. There were also a few who wanted to be actors, magicians, but also lawyers and bankers. For me, I wanted to be an engineer because I loved computers and I did end up becoming one. But now, let me bring you back to our reality, to the current world, where Sunday scaries and Monday blues are true. But hey, we do have weekends, and thank God for weekends. On one such lovely weekend, I went to the birthday party of my little nephew. Now, let me tell you a little bit about my nephew. He is a typical Gen Alpha, a generation that grew up with mobile phones, iPads, tablets, video games. He wouldn't even know what a CD or a cassette is, even if it hit him in the face. I know, times have changed. Think about yellow pages or calculators. He doesn't know. I was having an absolutely fabulous time meeting his other little friends, talking about video games, and also learning a little bit of Gen Z language, because why not? While I was mingling with his young minds, I kept wondering, what dreams are there in their little hearts? I got curious. So with a curious mind, I asked them the same old, old question. What do you want to be when you grow up? And boy, oh boy, their responses amazed me. Gone are the days when people wanted to be doctors or wanted to be engineers or, you know, the pursuit of traditional professions. Most of them wanted to be, wait for it, influencers. Yes, you heard that right. Most of them wanted to be influencers, either travel bloggers, food bloggers, uh, YouTube creators, or even TikTok stars. That's the new generation of influencers. And with that, let me welcome you to the new era of economy called creator economy, which is huge. By Goldman Sachs report, this entire economy is 250 billion already, and in just next four years, is expected to go to half a trillion. There are 207 million creators already worldwide, and that's just going to grow. So it doesn't surprise me when more than 50% of people, young adults, come and tell me that they want to be content creators and want to earn from social media which is great because something that was just considered as a hobby or a side hustle is now becoming a very legitimate career choice with abundant opportunities to grow and earn. I have been in this industry both as a tech professional and as a marketing leader, working with influencers and also as a creator myself. Nowadays, when I see leading institutions, even our Ivy League institutions offering courses in creator management and influencer relationships, it makes me happy because I know that is the need of the hour. I know that's how the whole economy is growing. My influencers have literally, literally changed the marketing landscape. And today I'm going to talk about one such influencer. Meet Michaela. Michaela is a 19-year-old influencer. She's half Brazilian, half American. She lives in LA. She loves music, she's also a uh, TikTok star, and she has worked with some of the best brands in the world. Prada, Calvin Klein, Samsung. Uh, she also is one of the top 25 most influential people on the internet as per Times Magazine. You know how much she charges for her one post? 
she charges $8,500 for one single post. That's 10x of most of the professions we've heard of. And she's not alone. Meet Eterna. Eterna is 25 years old. She's from Spain. She's known for her strikingly beautiful pink hair. She loves to travel, she is into fashion, she's also supporting a lot of social causes. She also loves traveling. And you might think you've spoken about two female Instagrammers. Uh, where are the male? Where are the male? Well, we have male rock stars as well. We have someone called as Liam. Liam is 20 years old. He, is, um, he has a Japanese mother and an American father. He lives in LA, loves to travel again, loves skincare, which is very diverse and exclusive. And then there's also Nock Frost. Nock Frost is 20 years old. He's from Atlanta. He has over 1 million followers. He's also in this, this age where most men like him are trying to fit in. So through his content, he talks about that and builds relationship with his audience. How much does he charge for a post? 5,000 pounds. Now, there's a twist, and I want you to get prepared for it. The twist is, Knox is not real. That's right. Liam is not real. Aitana is not real. Michaela is not real. They are virtual influencers. They are created by AI, aka digital humans. I like that thinking. So what are virtual influencers? Virtual influencers are created in laboratories by AI specialists, design models, computer science engineers, and also marketers who build the story around them. So you may ask, why are virtual creators generated? Because we do have real influencers and real life people. Well, the history dates back into the roots of when we used to have digital avatars or mascots, which have been part of our entertainment industry for decades. But digital virtual influencer was created in 2016. She was the first more popular virtual influencer called Michaela, and she was created in 2016, but she became popular in 2019. The reason she was created was just to test the potential opportunities of augmented reality and physical internet space. However, Aitena was created quite recently, and she was created in Spain by a person called Ruben Cruz, who wasn't having the best time with his agency. He was not earning more clients, a lot of his income was stagnant, so he started to deep dive and see what is the problem with this project. He realized most of his projects were either on hold or were closed because of issues beyond his control, mostly related to influencers he was working with. Their time, their location, their availability, their brand values, the competition they were working with. So he decided to create his own virtual influencer, aka Aitena. Now do you see the AI in her name? So Aitena is really popular. She has millions of followers again and also has lots of views and likes. Every single week, the team sits together and decides what Aitena is going to do during that week. What is she going to wear? Where is she going to go? What is she going to eat? But there are no wardrobe changes. There are no travels. There are no photo shoots. It's all just in a lab where a couple of heads, such as AI leads, uh, marketers, designers, come together to make uh, Aitena travel to Munich, if need be, or Madrid, if need be, and create that content and leverage it on her social media profiles. Now, you may say, well, these virtual influencers are great, but they, people know they are fake. So why are people engaging with them or why are people following them? And before I ask that question, I'll ask this question to you. Have you followed someone that you've never met in real life? maybe a football star, maybe an influencer. What you like about them, even though you don't know them personally, is that their life that they portray on social media, their values, their personality, their lifestyle, is the same with virtual influencers. People love to know a little bit more about them, especially the younger audiences. Now, I did talk about my nephew and Gen Alpha and Gen Z. So this is a generation which have really low attention span. They love excitement, fun, innovative things. They're both of the same old content coming on their feed. So they follow virtual influencers. 
As I said, virtual influencers are created within a lab by AI experts using models such as uh, 3D rendering, uh, you can even say modeling, Photoshop, and all of that. But they do have uh, millions of followers. Now, how are brands utilizing these? So brands are absolutely working with them very closely by doing sponsored posts. But there are also some brands that are creating their own virtual influencers. Marks and Spencers, for example, has created a new digital human or virtual influencer called as Mira. That stands for Marks and Spencer Influencer Reality Augmented. Similarly, Prada also created a new augmented reality model called Candy. But it's not just big brands who are working with them. You can also see Digestive Biscuit, a normal brand, working with Liam, who is the influencer I spoke about. So you might wonder, oh, that is fantastic. But why are these brands working with virtual influencers when they can work with celebrities and real people? There are four reasons. One, brand control. You can have more control over the narrative of your brand and also the way these uh, creators represent those brands. Two, cost, of course. It's much cheaper to work with virtual influencers, so your campaigns become more cost effective. Three, there is an location barrier. Transport, travel, physical limitations don't exist for these virtual influencers. Number four, they look flawless because they are generated through pixels. So they look fresh and active all the single time and they don't age. So brands can work with them for a longer time. And five, they're also available 24 seven because unlike real human beings, they don't have to sleep. But as I said, if you remember when I spoke about these virtual influencers, I spoke a lot about where they come from, what they do, who their parents are, what are their likes. You can imagine how much work goes into creating a persona about these virtual influencers. There are people who decide on creating the physical appearance, which are our AI leads, AI models, computer science engineers. There are also psychologists and marketers who work behind the personality of these brands. And this is where my main question on ethicalness comes in. So I have two questions. One is, I did mention that these virtual influencers look flawless. So are they creating an unrealistic expectations of beauty for us? That's one question. My second question is, Aitena was created by Rubain, a man, a white man. Similarly, Shudu, Shudu is another brilliant digital first AI model created by Wilson, again, a white man. So are they in a position to describe the best way to represent them? And this is where my call for today is. If we want to create a world that represents all of us in a true sense, then we need to get more diverse people seat at the table. We need to spread awareness as well as build digital skill gaps so that people are able to create a more relatable and reliable world that truly represents them, even when it comes to virtual influences. Other thing that I also want to remember that sets Human creators, apart from what she creators, is human intelligence. We've got empathy, we cry, we feel happy. Sometimes I watch YouTube videos or even Instagram videos and strangers are crying and I'm weeping my eyes out. That's the power of emotional intelligence. So how do we, as human creators, ensure that we're authentic, we are transparent, we are building that connection with our community and serving that purpose. But when it comes to building uh, uh, virtual influences, how are we using our emotional content and that kindness thought to ensure the same is reflected through our virtual influences? I also want you to think about this profound opportunity that we have got with virtual influences and the things we can bring in to do force for good in the society. I spoke about Knox. So Knox worked with World Health Organization during the pandemic to raise funds for people who were suffering from corona and dedicated those funds for the society. Similarly, Alil Michaela also has lots of charitable organizations that she works with, including California Wildfire Relief Fund, where she raised funds 
for the community, but at the same time, she also creates crypto art, which when sold for millions is then given back to the society to help women, particularly from reserve backgrounds, to come into tech and build models like her. So think about the possibility of using AI, virtual reality, and the things that we really want to bring in the world, which is true representation, diverse thought, but also societal impact. I am very sure of this, that virtual influencers are just gonna grow. Today, there are 250 virtual influencers in the world, but the rise in LLM and the growth in technology, they're only gonna grow and rise. I also know that once we have higher tech enabled through virtual, uh, virtual reality, uh, augmented reality, metaverse, Web3, this is also gonna be an opportunity that has a lot of abundant opportunity, but also going to grow. So if you are a marketer or even a business who's looking to step change your marketing game, or if you are an individual who wants to understand the potential of AI, or if you are a little kid, just like my nephew's friends, who is exploring creator economy as a career option, I want you to enter this field with open mind and look at the potential and also yeah, leverage it for making force of good. So today I want you to think about four things. One is acknowledge. Acknowledge how, how large this creator economy is growing to be in terms of legitimate career options, but also earning potential, not just as an influencer and creator, but also as a designer of an artificial virtual influencer. Second, I want you to recognize the future trends that are going to impact uh, creator economy, particularly with the integration of AI, Web3, and virtual influencers. Three, I want you to prepare. I want you to learn these new skills. I want you to upskill yourself. And I want you to take part, an active part, in building the future of this, which is more reliable, more realistic, and more approachable and responsible as we want it to be. And four, leverage. Leverage this economic potential, leverage this AI potential for the good of the society to create something that can help us achieve bigger goals and bigger social causes. And with that, I am going to sign off with my digital avatar, my digital AI creator. And how do I describe her? Well, meet Moon. She's a telex speaker. She's a creator. She's a futurist, social advocate, and a very kind human being. Thank you.